Good afternoon, morning, evening or night, ladies and gents, and welcome to Corncast 19. I'm your host, Alex, joined as always by... Hmm, who should we start with? This is the hardest part for me, is choosing who to intro first. But I, I know who to do. Are you ready for Teddy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that was Here I am. More hype, but I guess... Uh, no, it took me a while to register that you were referring to me. Oh, right. I was just like, <laughs> sent that like, <laughs> Do the dog bark. at something and I was like, Bark like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got the uh, Audio Jungle Gym over there. Yeah, what's up? Um, I'm wearing a, a, a gown, I'm feeling down, and I'm wearing a frown. And uh, the Martian MILF Hunter, uh, James. Good afternoon, morning, evening, or night. What did I say, James? What did I say to you right before we began? Right. Did he, did he do it straight away? No, I didn't. I didn't. I, no, you did. No, James, what? you did do it. Trust I didn't me. mean to. Um, and also, do you, are you keeping the mic away from your face and like going to it no. every time or something? No, you are. Yeah. Don't lie. Because no, I, I had to no, edit it out every not. time you spoke last episode. No, I just did just then because I was waiting for the intro, but it's down and we're fine. Is you it know? Stay down now? Yes, it's a fine day. This is a, We are down with the homies, you know? This is the, the time... Of the year for homies. It is a you know celebratory time of the year. This 2020 coming to an end. Uh, we've got a few <sighs> more weeks left though. But before we get too deep, I want to shout out the patrons over at the Jar Media Patreon. They make the audio version possible. Head over there if you want to support us and be shouted out in the middle section. Let's do some housekeeping. This is this is going to be a good housekeeping uh, based on just this last week. Okay. First, I want to shout out the. Jar Media Reddit, the mods over there have been, sorry, I mean subreddit. People hate when I call them reddits. Um, <laughs> that's what reddits. That's what are they about. are? Yeah, they they've up updated the Jar Media rules, and they're very strict now. For example, number one is uh, I'm a big dog, big bear, N word, I'm a lion. Number two is I'm the predator of the prey that is hiding, and it kind of goes on like that all the way to rule fifteen. Is, hey man, where the fuck is Maria Judah? So I just want to shout that out. <laughs> <laughs> um, ASAP Cracker Vivo said, Can the corn boys pull off a GTA heist mid corncast? And I'm going to go ahead and say no. No. Definitely not. There's we're no too. Way. We're too unorganized. I think that's. Uh, I think it'll it's be disorganized, I think you'll find. It'll be possible, yeah. but it'll be a bad episode because we'd just be playing GTA <laughs> and focusing yeah. on that. I could do it. I suppose they they were reasonably hard to uh, coordinate, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, no, they were. But yeah. I, I also hated GTA though. at that time. You've always hated this GTA. I know. I do hate this GTA, and there's there's a there's a very good reason for why I hate this GTA. <laughs> what, what and that's it? that the I'm character curious. models make me want to be sick whenever I see them. Oh, right. like, I can't get. I just can't play that game because the character models are horrible. That's uh, just my main gripe for that game. The Bosch says, I can't wait to hear you guys talk about the lore of Yaddle for an hour. Because, of course, the thumbnail was some bullshit like Baby Yaddle confirmed to be Darth Maul or something. Um, we'll talk more <coughs> about Star Wars in, in a bit when we get to the subjects. But do you guys know the Yaddle lore? Because I actually looked into it and found out Yaddle's kind of story. Because, you know, Yaddle just disappears after the Phantom Menace and just isn't in it after then. Yeah. What no, the fuck is Yaddle? Oh, it's the it's giant it's, Yoda. It's the girl Yoda from uh, the Phantom. Oh, <laughs> that's giant. Oh, yeah. Why is she's she like huge? Council. She's not giant, is she? She's just like normal. I'm no, I'm pretty sure she's like in the encyclopedia. The side wasn't she bigger than huge. a human. What yeah, the fuck I mean, is that all I'm thinking? But that DK encycl encyclopedia is probably like not lore anymore. Probably most of it. What on earth? But Yaddle appears in a fucking movie. Yaddle's real. Wait, yeah, Yaddle's well, actually in episode one. I'm not joking. In The Phantom Menace. Yeah. Yaddle is on StarWars.com. Yeah. Yaddle's like a fan favorite, dude. But there's like a whole story with her sacrificing herself to save Anakin, and that's why she's not in Attack of the Clans. <laughs> what? Yeah, she's like dead. I just thought Yaddle was like. Some stupid word, you know? They just kept saying it. Oh, right. But, <laughs> yeah, probably should have yeah. practiced that. Or just assume everyone knows what Yaddle is. Why didn't they call her Yodel? That's too far. <laughs> Yaddle's much better. Yeah, you've gone way too far. 
follow with that one. <laughs> is is that a thing though? Like back then, uh, every every Yoda character had to start with a Y. Like, um, all of that well, there, species. You say every Yoda character, but there's only been two now. Three with Baby Yoda. Yeah. Of which we haven't revealed the name. We haven't said our thoughts on his name. Still a spoiler, I already so I accidentally say. read it somewhere. Anyway, <laughs> did you read so, it on Reddit? We'll, we'll keep it. We, 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 we. About it. Yeah, no, I'm, I won't spoil it here or anything. But yeah, I did spoil yeah, it well, it's still by accident. People might not have seen it or whatever. Uh, Peter says, and this might annoy some of you. You can't seriously be saying Pepsi is better than Coke. Everyone knows Coke is far better, and the only reason anyone ever drinks Pepsi is because they have exclusivity deals with a lot of restaurants. Maybe this is an America versus England thing, but I don't think I could find anyone older than 12 around where I live who thinks Pepsi is better. See, I, was, I would say the opposite, and it's like, you know, if you're a stupid baby, then maybe you think Coke is better. <laughs> but I think that actually most people... Yeah, I think quite a lot of people I know have come around to Pepsi, you know, in, in later life. There's another thing we're not considering, though, Ruben, is um, we don't drink the like full sugar versions. I don't, I don't know what the well, difference is between yeah. full sugar Pepsi and full sugar Coke. To be honest, like just off the top of my head, I like, don't know, and I don't fucking care. Yeah, but they're like zero version or whatever, and I know they're bad for you too. But you know, pick your poison. Um, you know, I think the Pepsi one's way nicer. As far as the zero sugar, my the zero. my whole thing is the like Pepsi Max versus Coke Zero. Pepsi is just it feels more lighter to drink and just nicer. It's just taste. Has more flavor. Coke yeah. Zero is kind of gross. I'm no, saying, I, I, uh, I would have disagreed with you guys. Like Ruben was saying, people that have come around recently, I have come around in the past yeah. week. Yeah. See. Pepsi, Pepsi Max is genuinely so much nicer than Coke Zero. Mm -hmm. It is yeah, a delicious right drink. I think it is a fuller-bodied cola experience. Yes. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. I'll say that. I think it is fuller-bodied in, in in the sense that you know, if I was talking about a whiskey or some shit, you could describe it as a full-bodied whiskey. <laughs> Pepsi is, is the it. the full-bodied cola experience. <laughs> Damn, I didn't realize it was such an underdog. You know. But anyway, all the drinks in America have that stupid, uh, what do they what, use? Corn, corn syrup shit. Yeah, corn syrup. So their drinks are probably completely different anyway. Yeah, yeah. no, I, 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 when it comes to little, like, drinks like that, I think the regional differences make a huge difference with how they're just, like, produced. It's the same with, like, Guinness. So you can't compare, like, Coke, Pepsi here to Coke, Pepsi in America or Africa or Russia or Japan. They're all just completely different. Yeah, I fear, I genuinely fear for some of the Americans out there with some of the chemicals they're, they're allowed to put in their food. I, I had no idea this was like a thing until mm -hmm. like reading recently about how like we just won't use certain chemicals in the UK. Like they're banned and you can just buy them in certain products in America. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. That's what unregulated... British superior A, British superior A, <laughs> Britain, British... Uh, we had a couple of responses to this concept we discussed last episode of naming your children the same name as you or having a family name that goes <laughs> through the generations. Um, <clears throat> the Yawn Mower has a funny uh, observation I didn't think of. PSA to all JAR members and JARlings, don't name your kids the same name as yours. Hello JAR, I just want to give my thoughts on naming your kids the same as yours. The reason to never do this is because while you're doing the deed to make children, there's a good chance that your partner will scream your name. No one wants to know that either their mum or dad is screaming their name. <laughs> sex. Don't do it, Jared. Don't be a dick to your kids. Man Walrus 12 says, I'm an American woman with the same name as my dad slash grandfather, etc. I feel obligated to chime in on Alex's opening question from the intro of last week's cast. I'm the fifth consecutive guy in my family to be named... Manuel, and it's a bit annoying. Things were a bit confusing when I was a little kid, but there would be four Manuels in the house at once at family gatherings. But other than that, it doesn't create that much of an issue. My family came to the US from Cuba in the 50s, so the practice actually originated there. I don't really like my name because I think it sounds kind of odd, and people in America aren't that great at pronouncing it. Do you think they call it a manual? <laughs> There's a good chance. Manual. Manual. <laughs> I don't think I'd continue the tradition even if my dad wanted me to because I wouldn't wish that name upon my own son. Also, after being in America for 70 years, it's been so long that nobody in my family speaks Spanish anymore. We're basically American and don't have any ties to the name other than tradition. 
That said, if Alex doesn't keep his firstborn son, Aki, with two Ks, I'm going to have to order you to surrender the AI, keep up the good work. Mix. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting no, the, perspective. The, I hadn't thought about that. The main thing to me, I, d I, I don't know if I said this last time, but like you're already getting the last name from your dad. Why do yeah. you need to have the first name as well? <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, is it just like... Sure, you can be a bit more creative, right? Like, what TV show yeah. are you enjoying at the time? Just name like, yeah. Anakin. Or Walter. Something. Yaddle, you know, just something simple. <laughs> uh, let's go into Mando. some topics then. Um, speaking of Mando, I've got something to admit, all right? And I, I don't know how you guys are going to react to this, and I just want you to be Probably surprised. with disgust. It might be, genuinely, but... Um, <laughs> I did it. I delved into the Clone Wars and I've seen the major Holy arcs. Shit. <laughs> well, some of the major arcs. Um, I was most attracted to all the Mandalore arcs. For those who've seen it will know what I'm talking about. Because that seemed the most interesting to me. And I don't know. I started with like an arc from season two, then one from season three. Because I kind of just wanted to get to the later seasons because the earlier ones are so... So sure. aged and dated, and they look... <laughs> they're just a product of the time, basically. And I just wanted to get especially to the later season, because when I first heard about the Clone Wars, the first thing that flashed into my head was, if Ahsoka is this character that existed the whole time, then what happened during Order 66? So that was the whole like, interesting... That's the only, like, the biggest, like, conceptual thing, idea from the Clone Wars that is interesting to me, and they finally actually get to that in the in the, in the the last season. And it's actually pretty good. So something about Order 66, just as like a framing device, just works really <coughs> well. It was the same in that Dark Souls ripoff game. Like Order yeah, 66. Yeah, Fallen Order. A huge part. I mean, it's mm -hmm. in the name, but like... Yeah, it's... You're always it's waiting for it to happen. Good. Yeah, and just... It's, it uses characters so in a way like you, you would anticipate and expect, like... If if this story yeah. was included in the prequels, I feel like it, they would be pretty good. The Soka is an essential character for the, for that whole period working because you'd need like a jumping on point that isn't Anakin. Yeah, yeah it's 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 a, it's a really good. It's always fun to explore the implications of it in every character. What were they doing during this time then? Oh, right, they're dead or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> just it's just always like oh okay, and that's where uh, they were. Obviously, they bring Darth Maul back. And that's always something I felt kind of weird about because it was like, why do you not just do that in the movies? Like he's such a huge, he was such a huge part of the first movie. Why would they just get rid of him and never bring him back in the mm -hmm. films? And his like side stories do suffer a bit because of that because they just inherently feel less important because you know it will never tie into the major stuff in any way. But at the same mm -hmm. time, the way they use him is kind of cool because Dave Filoni, he's he's so obsessed with Star Wars and so true to <coughs> it, to it that like. He'll keep character's entire motivation down to the only reference they got in the movies. So, for example, Darth Maul's one line was like, at last we'll have revenge. So in the Clone Wars, his entire motivation is all about revenge. His entire thing is just like revenge and building up like a pirate army and being this weird like religious <laughs> zealot. Because he knows that, the, that Palpatine has a plan because he was obviously his like apprentice. So he's like trying to warn people that something crazy is coming something's happening and he <coughs> believes him and that's such a cool idea for that character and i wish that was in the yeah trilogy. so he's the alex yeah, jones of the star wars yeah, yeah. He's like alex jones but you know as the audience palpatine's, he's <laughs> palpatine's gonna turn the fucking frogs gay <laughs> by the way i just that. want to apologize for the uh the discord recording um being like really blurry because my internet it's not, it's not a wide <laughs> connection at the moment so the Dark Souls footage will be a little bit blurred, so sorry if you're watching that at certain points. No, it's it's just like that. <laughs> it's just oh, like really? that. It's like that for me. Yeah, it's like it's like a mosaic at this point. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's I'm, okay again. For James a bit. the one playing, so I'm not able to record it like from my PC. So apologies for that. So uh, what you're saying is you've kind of you've turned around on it, and all well, of the people that commented in its defense were white. They were right, but oh, some of them the Mandalorian might have been. didn't exist, so I didn't have my way of getting into it, you know? And no, I, 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 can't I get really, you. I can't expand without really talking about the Mandalorian in more depth, and I'm not going to spoiler it. Spoil it, sorry. 
uh, I'm actually going to start watching it. Soon. That is the way to do it, because um, the the like completionist in me was so anti the Clone Wars because I I want to watch the whole thing. It seems so wrong to me to just like pick and choose random sections to watch. But when you go through, there are so many episodes, and one was like Jar Jar Binks and Mace Windu uh, hook up. <laughs> And it's like, I can't, with shit like that, I, I can't be bothered. I just want the straight up, like, I want to see the love story with Obi-Wan and this this woman that, like, fleshes out. And I saw an episode of that. Yeah, I that saw, arc's yeah. really good. That was probably my favorite one that I've seen so well, far. Did you, is there just like a just like a guide on, you know, how to watch it for these specific well, arcs? There's, and, yeah, there's not actually the best thing. So the way I did it was just Googling around, like, what are the episodes with Darth Maul in? And do it that way. Oh, and then just what are the Mandalorian yeah. arcs because there are like multiple, and you can see the way that like in the later seasons, all the kind of throwaway junk episodes kind of pay off in some way. Like one of the random later episodes I watched happened to include a character that was established in one of the like episodes in season one that I just happened to have seen and always thought was like that's lame and throwaway. But I guess it's just Dave Filoni's kind of style. I really think this like matchup of Filoni and uh, John Favreau. I didn't like what he did with Lion King, but he seems to get Star Wars and that kind of Saturday morning serial storytelling stuff. Mm. Yeah, because I, I yeah I don't want to spoil anything with the Mandalorian, but I'm I'm enjoying myself each week with that. But yeah, I'm, I'm yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna start watching it. I'm gonna claim yeah. my Disney Plus. <laughs> <laughs> from there's my yeah, Xbox Game Pass and watch it. some things you obviously have to get over because like I've spent the last couple of years kind of coming to terms with the prequels as, a, as like a concept and just accepting them for what they are and uh, finding the, 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 the good ideas in the story just kind of <laughs> expanded stuff it's taken a long time for the prequels to get good in this in this aspect and like watching I'd, all the I'd, director's commentaries and stuff and hearing what George Georgie Boy was trying to go for. I'd but still sooner watch those over um, any of the sequels now, to be honest well, with yeah, you. Because now all the stuff that exists around the prequels, there is a like a genuinely really good story there. Yeah, you have to mm. pick and choose like parts of it, but the actual story all on paper is like really fun to explore now because there's so much just there's so much depth to it at this point. They just shat the bed with the three largest products that they were meant I, I to release to from Jim, the Star Wars. How cool would it uh, have been if there was license. if there was no Disney movies um, for like a long time and they started with the series like The Mandalorian? Just how huge the hype would be, and if they actually spent the time to plan out like a Think. Really awesome trilogy or something. And that was my topic anyway. I just thought I'd throw out the Clone Wars, and that actually gave it a chance, and quite liked it. <coughs> oh, yeah, I'm surprised. Yeah, well, it's made me think. Maybe, I, maybe because I, like, once I you know get watching the Mandalorian, it might make me want to. Uh, I don't know, just have a yeah, look at it the way you did. Some, just there is obviously some cringe shit in there, but I don't know. My tolerance for that's pretty high. But I, the I thing is that people are turning it, it away. You need to remember that inherently Star Wars is for a younger audience. Yeah, that's why it wasn't bothering me because it was yeah it was like classic George kind of like yeah. And George Lucas would love this shit. <laughs> and it's like, I can't even be mad <laughs> at that, you know? I mean, maybe that is what... Maybe Star Wars should always be that way. It doesn't need to be... I can't, what, did we talk about this last week? About the idea of, like, like superhero characters? I, it's like, why do they need to, why does it need to be an edgy version? I, I think it's, it's a child's I was property. talking to you about that separately. But yeah, no, I think it is that same idea. Star Wars does work best when it's just like you know you can have edgier moments because kids love a little edgy moment like in in Revenge of the Sith when Anakin shows his evil eyes everyone, when, I, when I was like hang on, eight that was fucking cool I was like oh, cool. he's evil now he's a baddie <laughs> you got you can have some edgy those. moments kids think, get it I think yeah. you need edgy moments there are actually you, loads I, of edgy moments in the Clone Wars I didn't realize like how edgy it is at oh yeah I, I watched. Um, I watched like I well I don't know I watched like a good two seasons of it, but I it wasn't season one and two because I'd already watched just when I was a kid. I, I used to just watch the Clone Wars show and it was all out of order and fucked. But I just I'd start an episode and I'd seen it, so I'd, I'd seen like a hundred episodes or something already. Yeah. But I I did see some of that edgy shit. Anakin being like, "No, I'm gonna kill them." Yeah, for real. it's what you'd expect. Like. I did see an episode where Anakin like murders someone and everyone's a bit like shocked about it and it 
actually kind yeah. of establishes his character a bit more and teases out the evil in him. And they also explain that whole thing of like, I never understood in the original prequels, like why you couldn't train someone over that the age of, you know, Anakin in The Phantom Menace was and why that was a problem. And they actually explore that and explain it, like in the Clone Wars and other mm -hmm. media. So that kind of shit helps. I don't know, it's either Stockholm Syndrome set, like finally setting in for the prequels or um, well, it's genuinely quite good. It's, it's weird because it's one of those things that I, I said to... I was just talking to one of my friends actually about about Destiny, and then I said it to I said it to Jim the other day. I couldn't I couldn't rightly recommend Destiny two to anyone. I couldn't recommend starting yeah, that game. Don't bother unless you already are in it. Unless you've already been in it for a mm. long time, don't fucking play it. Just don't bother. Yes. Yeah, the only reason I can get anything out of it. Content. Well, yeah. The only reason I can get anything out of it is because I've already played loads of it, and. Yeah, like I already did that, and 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 whatever. But I wouldn't recommend it to anybody now. I just, yeah. I just re wouldn't. Yeah. So it was, I guess it's kind of like that was, with Star Wars. Um, there was a bittersweet oh. angle to it, just in the sense where it's like, man, these beats really should have been in the movies, and they could have been really cool. But whatever. I guess at least we have uh, the, the four in order, you know, series, whatever that will become. Yeah, I I do think the future of Star Wars is in TV in serial. Storytelling, it and just, then it just you know, a video sense. game every yeah, video games what, two and a half, well, three years. That's where you have a bunch of time because mm -hmm. it's everything was so rushed over and like just well, priorities were all wrong in that sequel tr trilogy. But we don't need to talk about that in this episode. I know what mine and Jim's topic can be. We have a, a topic thing. Go on, shoot. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Five is one of the greatest games ever made. Damn. That's, that's, yeah, making the claim. You know, I, I like it more than I did when I played it, you know, a lot five years ago. Do you want yeah, me to I bring agree. in a, um, a Metal Gear question? Is yeah. there one? Yeah. Um, oh, I don't know if you want to talk about it, this. But, well, Dirty Granny Pants actually has this question. How would you rank the Metal Gear games? Also, what are your thoughts on the fourth game in the Solid Steer series? Well, still, sorry, while I still enjoy some of it, I find it doesn't have the same isolated atmosphere. Blah, blah, blah. Thanks for being so lol. You guys are great and I appreciate your content. Thank you. So you um, think it's the best Metal Gear? Where Where is it kind of... Um, I mean... I mean, contextually, I don't know. Maybe, maybe <clears throat> I'd say like three because of what it was at the time. Well, yeah. first of all, I just want to preface is? that neither of us have played Metal Gear Solid 1 because yeah. we're just yeah, not just, old enough. Um, well, it's, and we it's haven't played Metal well. Gear 1 or 2. Yeah, it, it's quite hard to actually yeah. get a hold of Metal Gear Solid 1 and play it. There's, there's not a particularly good way of doing it. Um, I know that there was a GameCube remaster that you could play via a certain piece of software if you really wanted to. Um, can't can't say it because Nintendo might like <laughs> do something. <laughs> but, um, and, and I think that might be the best way to. I think it's called the Twin Snakes or some shit. Yeah, it like is. That. Uh, see, there's not really a good way of playing it. Yeah, and Metal Gear One and Two. Um, I just feel like I have started Metal old. Gear One, but have you yeah. been replaying Five God or something it's recently? What made yeah. you get to this? Conclusion? Why did we? Why did um, we start? Well, I I bought it because in the Steam sale I could get it in Ground Zeroes, like the special edition for six quid. So I thought, fuck it, why not? And yeah. I, the main complaint with Metal Gear Solid 5 is that it's not a proper Metal Gear game. Like, the inherent sort of free nature of it, the lack of, um, like, a strict narrative. Right. Mm -hmm. It's way less linear. Um, <clears throat> but I think at the same time, that sort of makes it the best game. Yeah. It is so its freedom. It, it really it excel, it's not just like freedom for the sake of it. It really excels in the freedom it gives players. And it's yeah. non linearity. And the the way the game looks and everything and the the corniness, like to me it totally is Metal Gear. It's got everything Metal Gear needs mm -hmm. to be good. Yeah, it has all the really essential elements of what, what you know, why Metal Gear is is what it is. I think. Yeah, I would agree. Out of the ones you've um, played then, what's your rank? Um, oh. 
It's been a long time. I was, I'll start at the, the what bottom. What your thoughts on four? Because the question was about four specifically. Okay. Um, my thoughts on four are that I haven't haven't played it, but I just respond to the question about you know the, the feeling of isolation. My understanding is that it's it's very much coming to a head with its anti-war uh, sentiments, uh, and so being as it's set in a war zone, can't. I guess uh, you can't really be on on your own. I guess it's just one of those inherent things. When like a big series comes to an end, usually it's like, here we go. All the parts are in play. You can't yeah. really have anyone be on their own anymore. We're at the end now. Everything is going to be like tied off here. So the main critique I yeah. think for that game is just the the cutscene shit. And the the cutscenes are ludicrous. The there is an equal amount of cutscene to gameplay, I'm pretty sure. It's like 11 <laughs> hours of cutscene. It's insane. But you're a big fan. It's ridiculous. You, was that not like uh, a dream? Um, well, the, the thing is, the gameplay of that one, with how like contemporary it is compared to the others, it doesn't like feel good enough. Yeah, and it was on that PS3 controller as well. That thing was. Yeah, that definitely didn't help. But um, it's it's full of like the shit that you'd want. Like it it really is just the fan service. What do you call it? Fan service the game. Mm -hmm. But that's also sort of the point because I I actually watched like a a video analysis thingy on Metal Gear Solid Four recently. Um, <clears throat> people love it so, and will fight to the death to defend it. Yeah, and I don't blame them, but um. The the game is sort of about like just running a series into the ground. I think that's why you, the character you're playing as has like aged significantly in like oh, yeah. very little time. And he's being held together by something artificial, and that's the only yeah. reason he's still going. Meta yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's super meta. Like Kojima loves that stuff. Obviously, yeah. he always has, but. I really respect it for that stuff, um, but again, gameplay-wise, it's it's the one that I probably don't really ever want to play again. Uh, okay. What about three? Then? That that and Peace Walker, because Peace Walker being a PSP game, yeah, so it, you can, it's just so limited in what it can do. So they're at the bottom for me. Um, then Metal Gear Solid Two. Yep. That one's awesome. And that one like, is awesome. <laughs> again, it, like it's it's known. I for, love like, its ridiculous predicting story. the future. <laughs> yeah, no, but like he, because it was when it was before the internet was really that big of a thing, mm. and he talks about like the dangers of the internet, like way before it was a a real thing. Really, that's cool. Yeah, so that game story's awesome. Main problem for me is that the whole game is based on like a like an oil rig or something. Big, big um, show, yeah. Yeah, so... Just a platform, yeah. Yeah, the areas get kind of repetitive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that, that would probably be... I, I remember that about it. And then... It might be tied for me, but 5 and 3. 3 yeah. is so ridiculously good. Is it a coincidence that the ones with big bars <laughs> yeah. are the ones at the top? Yeah, yeah and I, I, I like... watched all the way through on YouTube. Ah, oh, three is so fucking good. Yeah, and the the Holy period shit. piece nature of both of those as well. Yeah, that yeah. they're based. Uh, period pieces are just inherently cool. They add a cool mm -hmm. factor. Yeah, yeah, and like K Kojima loves to go into excessive detail on like mm -hmm. aspects from time periods and stuff. Um, don't you like? So, yeah. I know it doesn't really count as part of the the normal series, but the the, the sword game. What was it called? Revengeance. Oh, Rising oh, Revengeance. Yeah, if Rising we're including Revengeance that. Is so good. That <laughs> yeah, is Revengeance an awesome is a top tier game. the best name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Revengeance is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's not canon either, is it? It's not canon in Metal Gear Solid uh, or something. They, they oh, really? didn't. But I sort of hope it isn't canon because it's like it's, it's fucking. It really stupid. takes it to a stupid level. Yeah, because <laughs> like, so riding the character from Metal Gear Solid Two, at the start of the game, he fights the Metal Gear introduced in Metal Gear Solid Two, mm -hmm. and to like display how strong he is now, he literally picks this giant robot up like by the arm, and it's like swinging it around and shit. 
That game just loses its fucking mind. Fuck. Yeah, but that that's a great game. Damn. Well, uh, that's uh. Do you want to know something sad about what Rising of Vengeance though? What? When when they launched it, they did a they put a massive advertisement of it. Yes. Rising. On a building, yeah, a mural of him, yeah, yeah, and they've taken it down. Yeah, they Seven did just years. the other day. Fine. Yeah, I saw that. I I mean, um, it down. So bizarre. I like, bought. <laughs> no, go on, go on. <laughs> it's just a stupid anecdote. I, imagine being someone who's not into games, and there's just this fucking robot guy on a building and then yeah. you play, and it's a game from like seven years ago like, well, it actually <laughs> says it said next to it as well metal gear rising revengeance like what does somebody <laughs> who has no concept of that make of it like what the fuck does metal gear rising revengeance what the fuck does that mean <laughs> but I, had a, weird street art. I had a steel book case i had a steel book case of that that illustration oh, of really? Ryden. um <laughs> It's just, very, very, care. very like, cool. Why they must have seen like the company who did it? Why, why did they leave it? They just like huh, let's just leave it on this building for everyone to see for years. It's, it just has to be that Metal Gear or every game just abandoned. I love that. Yeah, well, like it couldn't have been that valuable of a like advertisements. They could just leave it there for seven years. <laughs> yeah. Anyone have anything else to add before we go to mid break? Um... James Soft Tummy, James Soft Tummy feel funny and yummy. <laughs> no. Okay, we'll be back after these messages. Mom, hello, this is me, Arnie. Oh, you do realize that there are Mebo shirts available, right? Take a look at the really cute shirts. Look in the description or under the video for more. Good afternoon, morning, evening, or night. This is the section of the show where we thank the Patreons over at Patreon for their support for the show. So uh, let's start with a big thanks to uh, Dark Side Phil caught taking a fat line of ketamine on stream. <laughs> A.K.A. Bug Patreon Mechanics. I want to say... Is that actually true? Because I know he's done a lot of things on stream. Yeah, I, d I haven't heard about that, if it is. <laughs> <laughs> what? Can someone fact check? <laughs> yeah, fact can we get check. the independent fact check charity quickly yeah, find out sure for it's us. just a joke on him joking <laughs> live on stream. Oh, God, if he's... He, no, yeah, that's no, he too extreme. Do that. No, that he, he did do that. Yeah, he did yeah. joke on stream. I know that. Yeah, he obviously hasn't. Probably, well, I can't say. He might have done Ketamin live, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, we've also got Harriet Broadley, David, aka Review Tech, Wallace and Gromit, and the Curse of the Curse of the Curse of the Pisser Dick Poo for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. I guess you are my little Pisser Dick. Come here. Oh, Big Cheezer. Ruben, do you listen to Crash Crash Crazy Quasimoto. Moto? Yeah, I listen to some of the Quasimoto. Just, I figure that's an actual question. <laughs> do you know. either die very rough or live long enough to become the Mario Judah? <laughs> Fuck. Oh, here you go. Review just... tech, why, why... <laughs> why try? Just leave it. Why <laughs> try? <laughs> it's Polish, isn't it? Yeah, maybe it's yeah. Um, it might be um, it's one of those that part of it might be uh, Hungarian or something. Yeah, That's like the hardest language in the world or some it's shit. A village in Poland. Um, I'm the predator of the cringe ick that is hiding. <laughs> hey Siri, play Die Very Rough by Mario Judah, the Doopster, aka Surrender <laughs> that cute little man. <laughs> Sekini Atami o Shinra Tenshi. ODST standing by OD OD OD. <laughs> Suckle the teats of Andy Sigmore. Joe Jar's normal adventure. A thousand tongues and rubber gloved hands. Minions are sexual beings. <laughs> that bush bush. KSI, please stop wearing my mother's reg wedding dress. Imported guest. Covid was a planned event by the Jarlings to force Ruben back onto the class. <laughs> AKA Pop Pop Hoi Hoi He 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 Devoy. <laughs> I'm ordering you to surrender that Lego Ninjago Masters of, <laughs> Masters of Spin Jitsu Season 1, 2, and 3 disc DVD box set. I hope so. Hi, I'm off the cast. I'm off the cast. All of you, 
but I'm for seriously, seriously this time, aka review tech, Cromerford Creef. <laughs> I didn't fuck my cat. I didn't come in, come on my cat. I didn't put my dick anywhere near my cat. I've never done anything weird with my cat. Gilbert, the awesome one. Se- security to the bridge. The clitosaurus has gone rampant. Take him down, boys. The nostalgia crin- critics to pimp a butterfly, where instead of <laughs> intervening Tupac, he interviews your favorite Martian. <laughs> I said that intervening, interview... He did type intervening. Yeah, he did type intervening, to be fair. Nate's minifigs, check me out on Instagram. James, I have an unhealthy addiction to McDonald's. That's not Flash. fair. That's <laughs> not fair. New sets lover, aka review tech, surrender that AI. Big Muscles TV, 011, IE2. Mr. Cheesy Watts, it's the crunch on its head, 1,000. No more parties in Quahog. Please, baby, no more parties in Quahog. <laughs> Master Chief, what are you doing with that Big Mac, sir? Bjorga. <laughs> Bjorga. Man, I wish I was Alex's manscaped product, <laughs> a.k.a. Review... Re- 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 yeah. Ruben Poopin. Aha, that rhymes. James, get over here and suck me off. The ultimate Max Rebu fan, a.k.a. typical golden pussy enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Jar is at a boardroom meeting when static appears on the TV monitor, interrupted by Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. Josh Gilks. Cobalt Rad. David Wallace, there he is. I will not stand idly by while dra- while a dragon burns my hold and slaughters my people. In my eyes, the David Wallace are evil. Drain my cock, Johnson. <laughs> a new hand touches the beacon. Listen, hear me and obey. A foul darkness has seeped into my temple. A darkness that you must des... Chief, before this is all over, promise me you'll figure out which one of us is the big titty badonkadonk thick ass blue cum slut. (laughs) (laughs) No, no. My ancestors are smiling at me, Review Tech Tamriel. Can you say the same? Drug dealer, I wear Nike, not Nima. Guys, you aren't taking this course seriously. Please use the tripod. I love cigarettes and poo. Haha. <laughs> so we just got back from DC Suicide Squad. And all I have to say is, what the fuck is wrong with critics? Michael, aka Review Tech Taranaki. It looks to me like the best part of you ran down the crack of your mama's ass and ended up as brown stains on the mattress. I know you're just 16, but looking at all of 21, that's because the Chinese look older. What? The only good thing to come out of 2020 is 52 new episodes of Jarcast. I agree. If you don't regularly change your Patreon name, you're lame. You shouldn't even bother putting an odd name. <laughs> <laughs> Abigail Shapiro's Juicy Milkers. <laughs> Ben Shapiro owns James with facts and logic while inserting a banana in Alex's throat, aka Review Tech Joe Biden's America. Can I just point out quickly why are the two ones related to Ben Shapiro next to each other? It's destiny. Hello, my name is James, and my plan to make a greater England is by making ketchup on eggs a compulsory breakfast dish. Reese Duffy, Doog Wanker, the nostalgia cringic, Jack. Tom Fudging Armstrong. Do you get to the Swindon district very often? Oh, what am I saying? Of course you don't, you fucking menger. I'm ordering you to surrender that AI. Hi, honey. I'm home from the future. Hi, honey. I'm home, Cholos. Hey, did somebody say Cholos? Cosmic Mapping. Jamie, you talking about Alex a while back got me into the Half-Life series, and I love it. Thank you. You're welcome. Review Tech Coral Moon. Alex, has Argy ever worn shoes? Has he, Alex? A couple times. Good. Aaron Kavanagh. James, do you actually have a massive cock, or was it all an elaborate ruse? If so, show it. Gunge my clunge with James's 18-incher. T. Noble Doble. Michael Mann 2000. Stephen is human. Connor Tarder. And Ethan Taylor Brammel. Niggs Bosen. <laughs> David Wallace. Yo, where the fuck is Dougie O. Walker? <laughs> Katia fucking mannequin and uh, mannequin and wait, where's Davis Wall? David what? David Wallace? Did he unsubscribe from us? This is breaking my heart, David. Please, I'm literally right here. I'm David Wallace. James, can you please spare some cute, <laughs> juicy coochie for the rest of us? 
Jim, I've played Alex on VR. It's amazing for me. Second best VR game is super hot for you. Thomas Martin. Evan Pierce. Chiquita Banana Obama Oshkosh Bagosh Chiquita Banana <laughs> Obama A Simple Supper Time It's about a time of love of love Quahog Police Department <laughs> supports gamers Quebec Films Chris Warren David Wallace Aura Cool Dip Chip Cac Flexington Numa Numa Wait Numa Numa Banana oh, yeah Numa Numa Banana Ben Fart Bag George Kenwood Parker. I got to thinking, maybe I'm the Dragonborn and I just don't know it yet. <laughs> AKA Review Tech Pegging Porn. <laughs> Fiddle. Dream Awful 2142. Parentheses. Do an impression of the gorillas from Sing. Parentheses. I don't want to be in your gang. <laughs> I, d- I don't know what his voice is. You're no son of mine. That's my son. Rutro Raggy. Raimi is going. Reest of Roy. Fion O'Gorman, Wet Anal, Tomcat, aka Review Tech Gondoland, David Wallace, Ethan Height, Yaddle Penis Eater, 284 ODST, <laughs> Sir Capsalot. My issue with Master Chief Fux Cortana is if you read the Halo novels, you'd know the suit automatically jerks Chief off. <laughs> Billy Wiz, Acolyte, the normal patron, or rather the normal Patreon in it, James. Make Jim and James making out a Patreon goal. Let's round this off with a big thanks to Gabriel Ledge, Danny G Based Lord, Review Tech Grips Dibidosa. Some may call this junk, me, I call them Wraith from Apex Legends. The Beltman Booty, <laughs> aka Once There Was an Explosion, a bang which gave rise to life as we know it, and then came the next explosion. Hooper, Lewis Horsburgh, aka the Slimer Pooey Asshole Guy, aka What the Fuck is Mario Dibidosa. Ferdia Pleeman. Sam Buckley, aka Review Tech Swindon, aka Paid Twenty Dollars, Laugh at My Name. Mario Judah, Ruben Airlines, aka Ruben Tech Trips, sorry Tips. Sam, the entire country of Siberia. Alex, you fool! Every jar cast you fail to mention Angry Joe. He only gets stronger. Adam Johnston, Tom Buis, Juan Hernandez, Jam. Oh my, oh my! I found you, Bebo. Don't you run from me, little Dibby. Joel Stewart, Ruben's Moldovan son, Loggy Bear. Josh Dog Yeah Walker has 7 terabytes of Katia Manigan hentai. Connie Reed, drippingwetfart.org. Big whoops. Angry Joe actually loves Innocenti bean smoothies. Gremblo, Ollie Miles, my favorite drinking buddy, let's get some mead. Kuta Panda, 100010. Canada Stone. Justice for Fallout 76, just kidding, fuck that game, aka Review Tech Goatsy Dimension. Local units, all units. Randy Ruins Patreon. Don't read, just initiate a pit-pop poi, then say, don't you run from me, little wig- wigoy. We've already done it 50 times. Katia fucking Manigan and David Wallace. Thanks, everybody. Oh, <laughs> Welcome to the second half of the Corncast, where we answer questions from the subreddit. I said it right this time. Stage DK is going to start us off with the questions you can leave there if you like. Role play. James and Jamie are political leaders debating each other on national television. Unfortunately, they insist on changing the topic to English chocolate, so Alex, the moderator, has to keep them on track. Ruben is an American reporter named Eddie Brock. (laughs) (laughs) So today we're joined by um, the right-wing leader, James. No, okay, no, I'm not. I'm not participating in this role play. Fuck you. <laughs> okay, will you do it if we if we invert it? Yes. Okay, here's the left wing leader, James. Well, good afternoon. My name is James. Here's the right wing leader, Jim. Okay, I'm gonna have to stop this debate right here. What what mediator introduces the the political dudes as left wing and right wing? <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> what am I supposed to say? Like, you've got no political history or anything. What am I supposed to say? Uh, uh, James can be the UKIP. No. no. Uh, why? That's the, that is the party you most align with. <laughs> oh, you're really going to drag me like this, Jamie? Eddie Brock, take it away. <laughs> Oh, 
Shows have said Khan has one for us. You have to get one jar thumbnail tattooed on your forehead and cannot cover it up. <laughs> oh, uh, the naked guy running away from the hippo. Wait, can we stop? Can we do your? Sh I I can't. I have no knowledge uh, of jar media thumbnails. I'm gonna have to search. <laughs> okay, uh, I would say the recent yeah. Mario Judah one, where the F is mm, Mario Judah. Mm. No, you're that's fucking. I'm, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to do this too because I I don't. Uh, oh, fuck you. <laughs> Wait, is the Wait, naked guy running away or towards the... Um... That, was, that was changed. That doesn't count. It counts to me. What's no, it doesn't. <laughs> I that... think I'd get... <laughs> Alex, will you allow my one? <laughs> Repeat your one? The, the naked guy and the hippo. Yes, I will allow it. Because that's a, that's still probably saved in the in the thumbnail folder. Possibly the one of <laughs> Kanye and Joe Rogan, <laughs> slightly stretched. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Je did Jen's it's, answer? Uh, it's difficult. It's really difficult. Gordon and Freddy. <laughs> I was I was going through the jar media thumbnails, and you get to like. The era of the 100s and below, and the mm. thumbnail quality just absolutely drops. Like there I, a, um, there's literally I, a uh, initial D one. No, no, I drove no, so not. fast I became anime. Yeah, we Wait, just hadn't right? reached the levels of like post irony that we have now. You know, in the world. Yeah, still figuring it out. But... And everything, everything's much funnier now than it was before. <laughs> it's yeah, it's difficult. Gamers. It's generally difficult, but it's. If I had to, it might, it might be the um, two hundred two two five thousand dogs poo or you ping. <laughs> it two, might five, be that dogs one. Poo, poo you ping, yeah. <laughs> What's two five thousand mean? Ten thousand? It's because we we're talking about some statistic. <laughs> I just I didn't even care to me. Like, I was like, what? what was James saying? Like, 25,000? Like... Yeah, I can't remember why I did that. I, it's often it's often a very spur of the moment kind of decision. <laughs> it's, it's always like my favorite time of the week when you message us and say, uh, guys, pick between these <laughs> names. <laughs> it's just what, like... Uh, the, what it was last Yeah, time. this week's options. Or so last week's so options. last sorry. week I messaged you guys like, Okay, so which is a better name? Ch Chup, Chubba Chup? Or Yaddle revealed to be Darth Maul? Or Baby Yoda revealed to be Darth Maul? And, uh... So they obviously went with... Of a <laughs> yeah. Yaddle revealed to be Darth Maul, so it's... <laughs> it's an iterative Can process. I'm... One uh, and one of my the my probably my most fa my most favorite thumbnail is the adventure begins corncast one. <laughs> I <laughs> love that thumbnail. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Um, I get a shirt of that. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Only shallow has one. Good day, procurers of clunge. James comments on the recent cast about video games simply not being fun anymore. Truly resonated with me. I've been working my way through the MCC for the first time and recently beat Halo CE, clocking in around 12 hours according to Steam, which was the most fun I've had with a single player FPS since I played the first Doom in 2016. <laughs> Do you think that there's an optimal, optimal length for a game to be? Personally, it annoys me when people complain about a game being 10 to 12 hours long, even if it's amazing. I struggle to get an, into expansive 50 hour RPGs and I'd gladly... And I would gladly take a masterfully created, infinitely replayable 8-hour campaign like the Resident Evil 2 remake over The Witcher 3 any day. Your unparalleled critique and punditry would be greatly appreciated, fellas, game on. I think a game should be no longer than about four seconds, okay? And I think that the game should be opening packs and that each, yeah. each game should cost you... Oof, at least two pound fifty, and do you know, people uh, complain about that kind of length, ten to twelve? Because isn't that what that new Spider-Man game is? And that seems about right, right. Yeah, it seems perfect to me. Yeah, for a game like that, I think that's perfect. Because yeah. if it was like forty hours, I think it's pushing it for something like that. Because things start to wear thin, like you know, a game. 
if it has simple gameplay, isn't necessarily bad unless, of course, you make them, <laughs> you make a player do it over and over and over again in really repetitive scenarios, it's like in the case of um, any one of the modern Assassin's Creed games. Modern is in the, the past three. Yeah, well, so I don't want a 40 hour Halo game. Um, I don't want a three hour Halo game. <laughs> Um, I want a nice four to seven hour Halo game. Well, yeah, I, depending I, on I think you know, replays and shit. Halo Three might be a little bit short, despite how good it is, um, just because it's like the apex of it. But I don't know. I'd like to see a, a game that kind of length, ten to twelve, because I think that's about what is required for the the story to get in there and actually be something. Because I, I I don't know. Mm. It's really difficult when you're like three four hours long to do anything that meaningful i don't know like a, a, an example of like a perfect game to me is uh, portal one sorry i'm i'm speaking i suppose in terms of like huge projects because obviously like limbo is is appropriate yeah 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 is, and... no that's exactly it. it it does depend on the game because i think the witch uh, justifies its length yeah you know? like yeah, there's not the a wasted does. quest in that game there's not a isn't a the wasted bit. Kind of the appeal I remember. Of that game too. Yeah, yeah, that is an aspect. Like the same with Skyrim. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, it it just it's a game by game basis, you know. Because I think the Doom twenty sixteen was way too long. Yeah, that's a game I felt that with. But I feel um, I feel Eternal has fixed that problem for me. Yeah, I think Eternal is the perfect length. Yeah. Yeah, it's about right. Yeah. Um. J underscore Chadwick has one for us. Following 18's outro. God, I can't speak today. Favorite Beatles album and member? Uh, Kanye West is my favorite member of the Beatles. Yeah, I like it. Uh, I've only listened to one night. Oy, it's the White Album. Oy. The White Album is really good. Let me have a, a quick gander. Remember, it's obviously uh, Paul, right, Ruben? For that. I'm trying to think. Oh, Ruben just best. wants to fur you. you. Uh, um, I mean, it's not going to be. Uh, I, I hit my wife. It's not going to be him. Yeah. I hit my wives, actually. Uh, not going to be him. Uh, the other, the other two, I don't know. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> By the process of elimination, it's Paul McCartney. Just give it to Paul for that. Destiny. No, I like yeah. um, I like the Ringo. He wrote yeah. the shittest Beatles song. <laughs> Which one? Yellow Submarine. That was his brainchild. Oh, right. Yeah, because that's the Beatles I can't see. <laughs> they gave him one chance and he fucking blew it. In the land. <laughs> that was yeah, that's yeah. the thing. We listened to it so much when we were kids. Maybe that's it. Is like it when a, I was younger. Uh, it yeah, is like a nursery it's rhyme. a baby song. Yeah, yeah. It's a baby song. <laughs> it's a baby song. <laughs> Do you find it weird that they also release like. I'm the walrus. <laughs> they, did, they did both. Yeah. Things. Yeah. That is a great song, though. Um, yeah, mine might be the Magical Mystery Tour. Yeah, that one's really good as well. I really like the, the weirder ones. Weird Beatles is what I like. Yeah, I don't like the Magical Mystery Tour album cover, though. Freaks me out. It is creepy, but I don't know. I like it, that weird. Does it not remind you of The, the Shining? When that guy's yeah, getting sucked cool. off by the... <laughs> Because it's quite yeah. a weird album. Yeah. It's just, I don't know, makes me feel a little bit sick. <laughs> I got Pussy on the Brain X says, I recently got into Bjork's music, and I've been obsessively listening to her for the past week or two. It is genuinely some of the best music I've ever listened to, and it's almost changed the way I look at music. I was wondering if any of you have had an artist that has changed the way you feel about music, or if any of you are familiar with Bjork. Uh, what are her, your favourite albums? Thanks, Mingus. Bjork's someone I really need to yeah, catch Bjork. up on because the singles um, I have from her are really good, and that movie she was in is really good. Yeah, I'm not all that familiar with Bjork, to be honest. She's got like a uh, unique voice. Yeah, yeah. No, I definitely I've got like one of her songs, the the one from my childhood. Yeah, yeah I need to just add some of her albums to Spotify and just go through them. But... As far I, uh, as, um, sorry, Ruben, go. I was going to say, I never really liked Bjork. I remember hearing her on Radio 6 when we used to listen to that in the kitchen and shit when I was like 
15 to 17. Um, never really liked Bjork, and since then, just never, never bothered to listen, you know, because all I have is that negative, like, nah, didn't like it then, can't bother now. Yeah, it might never be worth to get it back. as an adult. Um, I'm not, I don't have like an album to recommend or anything, though, so I can't really lead. Just go on a really popular song. I find her just voice is just the uh, you've got you've really got to be in the right mood for it. Cause yeah, it's I think that was quite a, challenging. Would, yeah, because yeah, I used to be. Yeah. yeah, she does have one of those voices though where I wouldn't blame you if you just didn't like listening to it. Whereas yeah, I like for sure. Voices, you know. Yeah, I like voices that have like a personality, so I can mm. respect that for sure. For Bjork, but... but as far as the question goes, my answer would be. Talking Heads, I guess. Um, you know, those two albums especially remain in light, and I can't remember the other one. Wait, what was the question? <laughs> I missed the first part. I well, thought it was a Bjork um, specific question. Uh, I was wondering was if a favorite you had, album if you had an artist, artist or something that has changed the way you feel about music. Oh, right. Okay. You know? See, I think this question's um, odd because I think that coincides with the different stages in your life. Because music would have changed me when I was much younger. And in my late teens. So I've got two, really. Yeah, like seminal albums for you. Like what what changed the way you perceive music? What is the what is the music? But when I was younger it was Daft Punk, Discovery. Because that mm -hmm. was like an introduction to actually somewhat, you know, actual music. Because when you're young you don't listen to actual music like I didn't. I I didn't know what music was back then. So it, it just wasn't standing it's just was dubstep. <laughs> no, it's just, it's just like <laughs> when you're young, you don't think about music. I didn't. I didn't like hear a song and think, "Oh, I like this." It was just like it was just noise to like young me. And then when it was just like I re I I found Daft Punk and like Gorillas, it was just like oh. Then I got I got interested into it then, and with my later, <laughs> you you're gonna, probably gonna say this is cringe. Later teens, when I, f I finally started to appreciate like production and that type of stuff, was thanks to Nine Inch Nails. That's not cringe. Because that's not cringe that's at all. Cringe. It's totally reasonable. Shut up! <laughs> and that was just the perfect entry point into seeing music as a bit more than, ooh, this sounds good. Because everyone thinks, you go to a lot of people out there probably still think, this music sounds good, I like it. It was Nine Inch Nails. Fine. Like, this sounds good, but there's reasons why. And that's when I was just like, oh, I like this music for X reason. And now it's like, thanks to Nine Inch Nails, it's just like, I like music with incredible production. So Nine Inch Nails is like, a way for you to articulate. Yeah. Why you, you can actually articulate why you like something now, not just that I like yeah. this, which is and still okay. Like, and since then, I've just branched out into a lot more genres of music because of that, I know, discovery, I guess. Yeah. It's just that was like my entry point. <laughs> To me, it was um, it was Drake. No, it wasn't Drake. Mm. Well, then again, <laughs> I wanted to say it, but I couldn't remember the name of the album, so I fucked it. I was trying to remember his 2016 one where he sat on that fucking tower. <laughs> if, <laughs> if you were to do the math, so he'd be like, <laughs> like eight meters tall. It's such a strange thing. <laughs> um, an artist for me, like more recently, it was Sun Kill Moon. That was uh, like a really contemplative uh, sort of I guess artist for me to start enjoying and I, I really liked listening to it and now I just sort of I'm not really sure but then again I also went to gym people still listen to Morrissey and he's a massive piece of shit <laughs> like yeah, whatever like, man so many <laughs> he gives a shit have raped people as well I don't know what the fuck mm. that is about but like yeah so I, I guess I can still like someone come in yeah I think Sun Moon is, yeah, that, that, that's, uh, uh, I guess, something that was, it, it was just sort of came out of nowhere, you know? You sort of think, yeah, I know what I like. And Sun Moon, I was like, oh, okay, this is new. This is something different that I like. What about you, Jim? Yeah, I've, I've got two. Um, the obvious one being, like, Pink Floyd. Yeah. yeah just the, the, the answer for you. Yeah, but um, my other one is actually... Kendrick Lamar and specifically to Pimp a Butterfly. Yeah, that's a good answer. That definitely made me appreciate rap in a new way. Yeah, yeah. To say that you hated black people and now you like them. Just say oh it. My God. <laughs> no, <laughs> something that coincides with my 
Nine Inch Nails fit, um, one is like shortly after Nine Inch Nails, RTJ. Like that's when I learned of them, and then ever since, I, f- I fucking love RTJ for that same re- same reason. LP's yeah. production, it just hits the same fucking notes. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, he's I fucking even done some like... remixes of Nin songs. That yeah, are pretty sick. And then like RTJ's like influenced everything else. It's like boom, love RTJ. And on the, actually, while we're talking about that, RTJ four has grown on me a lot more now. You're starting to see it now. Yeah, no, it's so it's fucking it's, it's so good, so good. I I I kind of hate the fact that when I first listened to it, I was like, eh. But no, it's it's like all of their other albums. It's fucking banger. Yeah, and uh, delivered at the perfect time. Yep. Ben Bino's Best 93 has one, yeah. Yo, New Jarling here. I just wanted to say I love the cast, and I'm currently working on Ruben's illustration as of writing this. Yeah, then they've done a really good uh, illustration. I was going to say, is that the one I would have seen oh. now? Like, this must, that yeah, must yeah. be done. I, I was going to make it the thumbnail. Um, yeah, I saw the I saw the all. I've been keeping an eye on them, and then I I did do a little like for the all four of them together one. I just <laughs> don't think to on Reddit, and then I thought, oh yeah, I'll do that because. So I imagine this is the the yeah. the one that's he's done. He did he posted them all individually, and then posted the group the group of four. Yeah, yeah, yeah wasn't that is, it's so good. I love that art style. It's really cool. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're great. great. I look, they... No, do you know what's the weird thing about that? I look. Like like someone in like the Soviet like revolution. Yeah, that's what I like, think as well. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, they have a four sorry, three questions for us. What is the best way for the one percent to spend their collective money? Um oh, probably for oh, altruistic oh. things as opposed to you know personal yeah. wealth. That's the obvious uh, Well I'd say houses and cars and uh, really, really, like really big houses that yeah, destroy, big, like, preserved sort of, like, areas of outstanding yeah. natural beauty and maybe, like, yeah. you know, forced extinction of a few hundred species of... Un- and some unknown species uh, <laughs> of animal, you know? I think that is a good way to invest. See, they're not being creative enough, these fucking billionaires, because the shit I would do, like, actually make the pod race as real as we can... <laughs> <laughs> No, no, but, no, but here's the thing. They they can't think like that because their entire brains are wired for profit. It's, they're like, oh, if I've got money, I'm going to get more money. They don't care about actually being creative. Their whole mind is warped to the concept of capitalism to the extent where all they will do is try to get more. Because it's an addiction. Once you get money and you get constantly getting this fucking money, you just want more of this money. That's why it's a problem. They just they need intelligence. They need actual like creativity. They need something else that's not fucking money. Yeah, they should just do pod racing. <laughs> yeah, real life pod racing, or you know, just I, any kind of. I think they should. They should buy up all the property, and turn buy up every all the empty lots. Yeah, buy up all the empty lots and make one giant chip shop. <laughs> <laughs> And but they all they serve is chips. Like it's not fish and chips. It's a chip shop. If I if I meant fish and chip shop, I would have said fish. But it's just chips. And you get curly ones, like chunky ones. No, 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 in, no. You just get like chip shop fucking chips, fucking and they're, and they're always really these. sloppy. They're always really oh, sloppy uh, and like, slurmy, like chip shop chips can get. No, no, uh, it's the chip shop chip chips, and you know the person does not give a shit about the chips, so they're that fucking garbage chips mm. i like it when they're sloppy <laughs> sloppy well. chips sloppy salty vinegar chips do you know i know if if, if I <laughs> wait what the fuck fu- how have we ended up here oh yeah it was the money thing <laughs> it's just like i i try and create like pod racing i try to create like red line in real life it is basically <laughs> yeah. pod racing. that's not a bad idea you know just make it it'd, be, oh, it'd be so <laughs> dangerous yeah <laughs> imagine people like, would just be dying yeah, but you, if if you tell people like, "Oh, I'm a billionaire. I've got. Oh, if you win this dumbass race, I'll give you billions." <laughs> They'll do it themselves. It's not yeah. like I'm not forcing them into it. That's I would do I, it. Um, is another interesting question they posed. How would you feel about cars becoming fully autonomous and losing a steering wheel, pedals, etc.? Um, I hate that idea. So um, as long as they replace it with something cool, like um, like a joystick. Yeah, a little 
Joystick. Like, a, like an Xbox Series X. Or a keyboard and mouse. So, like, Would you be willing to... Right. You? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think the, uh, the lack of freedom over driving your own car would be worth it if there was some guaranteed way of like just making the roads like way safer than they are currently? Like, um, probably. Safer. No. Wouldn't they be way safer if it was all driven by ro robots? Don't make mistakes. No, it would. But there's... <laughs> Uh, I guess your worry is somebody exploiting it. If someone's exploited because they can just hack cars and crash them into each other. So someone will choose to kill you at some point because they've got some an ulterior motive or some shit. But there's like, here's the thing: if that happens, like, rebellious street racing will become even even more like of a problem. Because I'm not gonna like not have one of those cars. I'm always gonna own one of these stupid Japanese modified cars because it's just the way. And you won't be able to drive them. No, no, but that's the thing. If they make them illegal, I'll still do it. Like, what are they going to do? How, Chase how me? They, yeah, they will. Yeah, pull you over and then uh, charge you. Yeah, as if you can, you could be yeah, but... like an electric fucking robo car that <laughs> can do all yeah. the maths. Because eventually it will run out of charge. Boom. And I won't. I can just yeah, keep going. They'll have fusion reactors, James. You can't win this fight. Yeah, you'd probably run out no, of No, I fuel. can. I can win this fight. You can only win it if Alex creates pod racing. And you get a pod racer. Yeah, no, that's the cool. Thing. No, no, but on a serious note, I think if when that happens, there will be like a like a, a group of people like me who want to stick to the old ways. What when pod racing becomes a thing? No, when like when cars are all electric and it's all like you know autonomous and whatnot, there will always be like these you know like you know how like sometimes when we go to Swindon, there'll be one of those like classic sixties muscle cars. And it's like holy shit, mm -hmm. it'll be like that, but with like a car like mine. Or like a car from this age, that's it's always going to be but will a the thing. The market not just shift to, like, just whatever looking car you want, but it, it it's electric, it has a battery. Yeah, no, no, that that's what they're going to do. Like, uh, the the full electric thing's a weird conversation because the infrastructure at the moment for like electricity is so it's not advanced. It's quite like, limited I still. How you're supposed yeah. to do it in a city when it's all based around like apartments and. Yeah, so it's like okay. fu nuclear fusion is more more interesting now than ever before. Like China's just started there, like actually doing proper tests, and it's like, you know, that reality is getting closer. But then it's like Porsche are unveiling this kind of e fuel that comes from electric energy anyway, and it, there's no pollution in this fuel. So you, you put it in a normal car, and it basically there's no harmful gases. So there's there's a lot of options for what, like, if it's going to become electric or it's going to become an alternative because. With, with nuclear fusion, hydrogen could be a good means of powering cars, and that you know that that. Creates... Look, if you've seen right Thunderpants, all right. If you've seen Thunderpants, then you'll know that there's a much easier way to power the planet. You just need the farts of whoever the fuck played Thunderpants and Thunderpants. <laughs> all I'm saying is that. There is very possible that there'll be other means to el electrical cars which still use a normal combustion engine. So uh, engines, as we know them, won't disappear for at least a hundred years, without a doubt. I don't think they will, because if you can if you can put a liquid in a car that has no CO two, why wouldn't you? Because it's why not? What, so like it's a, a liquid you can pour into your car and it has it's, no it's, a, it's, an, it's, it's an e fuel. It's, and it, right. so it just doesn't make the same pollution like petrol does when you burn it, or diesel, or something like that. Yeah, like there, I've never really looked into it, so I wouldn't know. It's it's basically it's it's just been unveiled by Porsche. So it's still a like a yeah. This a, is a all really early technology we're talking about. Like yeah. electric cars are still pretty new. It's like you see the future where it's just like oh, there's this car that like you get an electric car and you go somewhere. Like that's not going to happen in our lifetime ever. Like well, we yeah, will but... only start. I don't know. I don't. I don't think it will. Yeah, because like fully... doesn't like um, Tesla said they're going to release an affordable one, like within the next. Yes, few years. but I mean, like on Surely on a wide scale. Their, like... I think yeah, within the next ten years, prices will start going down into realms. They that will. Be affordable. They will, but I think the majority. I think it'll be in the next like ten twenty years. I think we could see a large like thirty to forty percent like electric cars as compared to a large majority petrol cars, and over time that will still. That that it would swap between, but like in forty years, the majority will be electric cars, but petrol cars or combustion engine cars are still going to be a big thing. 
like yeah, these unless the technology where, improves it needs to still yeah. exist in our current society um, it's just about improving it it's improving it so that it doesn't isn't as harmful because yeah. if you in an ideal world if both are completely eco-friendly then that's the best of both worlds because you get the car people are happy then people who don't care about cars like you know they've got the convenience it's just a it's just, it's an interesting phase in in just humanity the the stage you're at and i can't be certain if if we're going to have this like super cyberpunk future of electric cars and shit yeah. everywhere like fleets and stuff we just have to wait and see i can't say just I think um i think that we should all talk over each other about different things for just the last like how how long have we got left um i'd say two more questions Okay, so instead of answering those two questions, we should all just talk over each other about different subjects just at the same time. So, so yeah, is that okay, everybody? Is kind of yeah, and I mean, I've been thinking a lot about Metal Gear Solid 5 recently, and side. its gameplay is it's just... Gentlemen, welcome to this episode of Apex Legends. This is... She is one of the worst characters in the game. I've been playing okay. Apex Legends for quite some time. And I right, don't just cut him off, alright? We're not doing this. Cut him off. What's the next question? I'm not letting James talk about fucking <laughs> reading again. Sean Athan021 says, Did you know Game Theory has a new channel called Food Theory? Yes. What? Wait, what? His first uh, video was, uh, Is the Cake a Lie? Oh, the food Jesus. Theorist. Oh, for fuck's sake. Did he upload it on yeah, and he's got the film theorist as well. He's he's got he's Why you know how the film theorist, but you know how his intro thing's got like the Xbox mm. the Xbox 360 thing where it goes bum 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 bum, and it's got like four game theory what sections. Is this? He's got he's now got like a channel for each segment of the quadrilogy that is oh my God. food theory. He's been like unveiling. Them. Read some of the like titles. If you it, okay. I, I am on it. Okay, we'll go from... So, welcome to Food Theory was the first one. <laughs> food Theory. Never order McDonald's medium fries. Food Theory. Tootsie Pops. How many licks does it, presumably, take? Food Theory. Don't trust your cake. Food Theory. Kool-Aid Man is a Marvel villain. The thumbnails are making me angry. I've seen that. Food cool Theory. You've been scammed and never knew it. Supermarket secrets. Will Master Chef Gordon Ramsay fail? And the thumbnail says, can he be beat? What makes oh, a sandwich a sandwich? I so know, oh, I thought... Like, I no, thought no, it's, it's, it's legit, like, food stuff. Oh, I so thought... It's, it's, ah, this... It's not. It's such garbage. It's this is just... I'm saying stuff. it. Matt it's, Pat, this is garbage. It's, it's the <laughs> color of the Mojo shit. Yeah, that's horrible. Ugh. The I thought anyway, it was a sad thing. I yeah. thought it was going to be like tutorials on how to cook the perfect sirloin steak. It's not hard. That's not a theory. That's you can't. There's no. Th it's, yeah, it's got to be I, stuff I, that isn't. Even, yeah, he's got to have something no, to that's prove. That's an example for fuck's sake, guys. Ah, oh. hmm. no, but that's it's just saying stuff like that. He's gonna make it. He's gonna. He's gonna somehow get fucking five nights at Freddy's in there, isn't he? Somehow. No, that's game theory. There's probably already yeah, like food. a FNAF cookbook or something. I bet you. Yeah, he's gonna do it. He's gonna make seven videos of it and make millions. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's end on this one from Muncher is, isn't is on Reddit. Halo Infinite's community director stepped in like a week ago and, and called Battle Royale rumors unfounded. Do you believe the game will be as bad as people say it's going to be? Or do you think people should wait on this <laughs> one? Also, I'm foreign, so sorry for my English. Um, so oh. is it going to be as bad as people No, first expect off, is it going to have a Battle Royale? I want us to just have a yes or no. Like just round. No. I'm gonna say yes. I think it's yes. 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 I, it no. might not have one at release, but I think yes, it is that, going yeah. to have one at some point. But this is my yeah, theory. I'm, though, I'm right? in the same position as Jim. We already know that it's a free-to-play multiplayer game. Yeah. And how yeah. is it going to exist without that game mode, where all the competition has something like a battle royale, doesn't it? How are they going to carve that out unless it is classic Halo multiplayer? Which is it going to be? No one even, they haven't said, so I, I don't know. We're all playing guessing games at the moment. My expectations are incredibly low, and my hope is pretty low. There's no reason to have any faith in the project, I don't think, really. Um, 
considering their track record. But I want it to be good, obviously. I'd, I'd prefer it to just be good and just... Yeah, I'd prefer it to be a good game. Um, well, that's obviously what I want, but so far I'm not... Faith, <laughs> Faith is, um, you know, a little low at I the just, moment, my, isn't it? Yeah, my fear is I... I think they have done the classic thing the whole industry has done in just they're copying Destiny and it's a late Destiny <clears> thing <throat> and no one's going to care and it's just going to murder the franchise like permanently. So that's my fear. That's, I think that's worst case scenario is it's like a, a Destiny 1, not even a Destiny 2 ripoff. Then it'll be like worse than Destiny 1 on release. That's like worst Honestly, case scenario. Honestly, my the best case scenario in my like, there's no chance this game is going to be good at release. Um, <laughs> but I, I think... I think... Kind of on that. No, it, it's too fucked. Like, it, it didn't but seem to be a delay. We actually have no idea, really. No, but every time you hear something, it's just... It's just bad. It, yeah, it is yeah, bad every time. Yeah. So it, it doesn't seem like they did a Rockstar or a CD Projekt Red delay. It was like it was almost like an embarrassment thing because yeah. they thought they were showing off something impressive, and then everyone was like, "Wow, this looks bad." Well, do you, do you so think if COVID it. didn't happen, the game will be out by now? Because it's just been revealed that like Master Chiefs and coming to Fortnite, and like surely that would have been some kind of planned thing to, oh, yeah. you know, co, you know, boost Halo Infinite because that should have been out by now, and they could have boosted each other. I don't know. Which Master Chief is coming to Fortnite? The is it the it's wow, okay. one, yeah. Wow. yeah, but that's why I think it's that anyway. But... Yeah, that's a good point. Because yeah, there's all the products. It clearly like they didn't want to delay it, and they wouldn't have set that date and like put all the packaging and shit for the new Xbox and stuff. Yeah, all the monster delay. shit as they well. They must like... have thought internally that they were going to hit that date and that it was a pretty secure thing. But then of course, COVID mm. threw it off. So I think it depends on when the next release date release date is. If they delay it to spring then I might actually have more faith than if they delay it till like winter because then that kind of implies there's kind of just a bit more polishing to do as opposed to complete restructuring and complete redesign. But I don't know how fucked it is behind the scenes, so. Yeah, and th this is 343's third go mm -hmm. at, at that's Halo. Why and like they, yeah, yeah, that's why my faith is so low. But I think there is a chance that at some point this game might be good. Like, maybe yeah. if it is a few years okay. after its release. Because is it even unfair to say they've fucked up every major Halo release they have been responsible for? No. It's totally fair. Like, people might argue Halo 4, but go back and play it now. That game... That game... It sucks. Yeah. I it really I think sucks. it's just as bad as 5. Uh, yeah. Honestly. We were, we were almost coming down on it being worse than 5. Um... Campaign wise, I do campaign think it's worth it. Yeah. It's just not very fun, is it at all? It doesn't even feel remotely fun ever. But yeah, that's the only thing that I that would put five below four to me is the fucking microtransactions, all the pack stuff that really pisses me off, and everything yeah. it is in. And and I guess I I think what we mainly mean is that the story was worse than we remembered and that was like the main thing we remember mm. as being like good like holding it up like well at least the campaign was pretty good and stuff but it's actually mm. it doesn't really hold up pretty bad <laughs> yeah yeah James you have any thoughts on Halo Infinite I of all the like in the recent like year I've been the most like against it because like You're there's a nothing. Did you even watch like the, the video? The gameplay? <laughs> yeah, I, I did. I don't remember what your thoughts were. But it's just like I didn't have hope like anyway because it's yeah. it's like I've been watching loads of stuff on Halo and it's like Halo One was rushed, Halo Two was rushed, Halo Three had a lot of issues, mm -hmm. Halo Four terrible, Halo Five terrible. It's like luck has never been on Halo's side yet. It's always well, done well. I luck think, was always, I think that's the thing. Well. Luck was always on it. So yeah, because luckily it always came together with yeah, 1, yeah, 2, yeah, 3, yeah, ODST, yeah. Reach. Tenants. The studio had core tenants that the, they designed everything around so that at its core it remained true to itself. That's the core yeah. problem with 343. I just, I, I think I meant luck as in like the Wash development was like luck against them but then when it came out it was luck on their yeah, side. Yeah, I'm sure like most games have just fucked developments but yeah. I've seen it's just anything creative but, in that way is going to be tumultuous. <clears throat> yeah, like Halo Infinite seems even worse 
Like that, it when you, when a game is getting a battle royal well, this late, you've you've just got to kind of just throw it in the bin. Well, I think so it seems bad, but it's it's not as bad as Halo Five even. Yeah, it's not as bad as Halo Five. Yeah, like they showed gameplay, and you know, won't be fooled again by you know Halo Five, which I looked at, and I was like, okay, fine. But Halo Infinite didn't have didn't show off anything that from the you know like Halo Five. It didn't have anything in there that that made me think now like oh god why are they doing this? It was it's, actually yeah. quite like all right. I, mean, I was like, okay yeah. I mean you know, there's a sprint, but he's shooting stuff the way that he probably should be. That all looks reasonably all right, I suppose. And they're they're just not doing a good enough job of controlling the message. You know, like no. when when the new metroid prime game was delayed you know the, nintendo kind of correctly set expectations for like what that meant they were basically like look this game ain't coming for a long time just forget about it basically <laughs> you know yeah, just don't worry we'll release so, some other stuff between now and then we we'll don't know it's, it's all good, how baby. long we're gonna be waiting for this because they're just like yeah it's been delayed well, they said delayed till next year but that could be so in my head i but just set the arbitrary time. like november next year that's what i figured holiday next year yeah i don't know that's, that's just the date that i set myself because yeah, i don't know if they could delay they, any more than that when they refuse to put a date that kind of implies that there's more work to be done you know because like when mm. cyberpunk and they're actually month, not sure and they explain why they delayed it for a month you know they, they actually communicate mm. It must just be. I, I think what's been happening is, after Halo Five, the the studio has been gradually shifting as a result of the backlash from that game, and they're basically mm. trying to fix just three four three behind everything, the structure everything. Yeah, yeah. So it's just going to be messy as well. It must be a nightmare to work there. Yeah. They need Marty O'Donnell. They need Marty O'Donnell. They need. He'd whip them into ship shape. They got, yeah, they got. Um, I can't remember his name. The writer. Is it Stanton? Stanton? Yeah, Joe, was it him? Joe yeah, Stanton. it was Joe Stanton. Yeah. I think it's actually pronounced Staten. Staten. Yeah, because Staten's are the, is that drug, isn't it? Uh, anything else before we wrap up this episode then? Um, I just need to to do a squirty little. Um, I just um yeah um no I got nothing. I, I got nothing. Need to do a little squirty um. Yeah, I just kind of need to. Do I a need to do a little squirty, um, squirty out of my wordy, <laughs> as it wordy. <laughs> James, take us away. Oh, misty eye of mountain, low, wee wee Fuckers. Was that the uh, duel of the fates? I don't actually know. No, it was misty. Sounds like ding, 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 oh, ding, 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 ding. That's what I, I thought it was in like uh, the it's bells. Oh, baby. Bum, bum, bada, bum, 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 bum